Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again for a radio audience here in Mississippi, WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're glad that you all could be with us. Also, just tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. Glad you all could be with us as well. Well, as you guys know, when it comes to the topic of bullying and suicide, those are topics that we definitely try to shine a spotlight on as much as we can to raise awareness, but also to talk about the impact. Our next guest is Director of Thomas Keith. We're going to talk to Thomas not only about his new film, Bully, but also what it was like for him to to live with this topic, to be able to share these amazing stories, as well as what he hopes you're able to take away from it. It's already an award-winning film at the film festivals. Now you all can bring it into your homes. We'll talk to Thomas about that experience. And of course, let you guys know how to stay connected with the updates about the film as well. Thomas, thank you so much for the time today. really appreciate it. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, wonderful to be able to speak with you. Uh, the pleasure is definitely all mine. Well, this is a big day for you, the official release to the world of Bullied. First of all, I mean, I know this has been a long journey for you, but how does it feel now to be able to reach a larger audience with the message of the film? You know, that's that's the goal of making any documentary film. You want that message to get out there so that people can use it, so they can think about it, and particularly those who might have kids that might be able to make changes, whether at the educational level or on the personal level. So, yeah, it's wonderful. Have you always known that, that filmmaking was the vehicle that you wanted to be able to speak to the world in, Thomas? I mean, the, the the documentary is so well done, and we'll get more into the layers of it, but have you always known that telling stories that way was something you wanted to do? Not at all. Um, I'm a university professor here in California, and like many professors, I was doing what we do, which is uh, submit articles and books to our students and having class discussions but the more I started thinking about being able to communicate with young people, the more it became clear that films and, and mass media is sort of their vehicle that they use to, to talk about ideas. And so it started to make sense to me to explore how can I make films to expand the audience so that we can start having national and even international conversations. And, uh, yeah, it has been a wonderful vehicle. This is my fourth film and uh, very blessed to have them do well to this point and open these conversations that, that might not have otherwise opened up. You know, there's a couple personal things for me with this, uh, Thomas. My my regular audience knows I'm a suicide attempt survivor myself. had nothing to do with bullying, I should say, but there are kind of two, I guess, threads in this in this film, and I thought it was very interesting that that even though the title is called Bullied, in the film, a lot of those individuals that you you know profile, of course, the result was them taking their own lives. Others, of course, there's the effect of that. Did you know going in that there was such a, a correlation between one and the other, that when you looked at those who either had attempted suicide or committed suicide, the connection to bullying? You know, I didn't... I didn't know as much as I learned through the process of making this film. I suspected that self-harm was certainly connected to bullying, and I was bullied as a kid and remember very vividly what that was like. And so as I started to meet the individuals who are in this film, including the many experts that uh, also you know, help, help out the film, I learned a great deal, and that uh, this is a, a pandemic problem with young people Uh, 5,000 young people in America take their lives each year, 200,000 attempt suicide. And um, and so while bullying isn't, as you said earlier, bullying is not the only reason why young people might be struggling. It's certainly a trigger. It's a pretty profound trigger. And I don't think adults necessarily uh, appreciate how much of a struggle this can be for their child. In many cases, Parents are not aware that their kids are being bullied, let alone that this could be creating suicide ideation for them. So I I spent four years making this film, and I have to say it, it changed me. And I learned a great deal about a subject that I had 
uh, in, intuitions about, but didn't really command the facts as I do now. Yeah, and I want to talk about the 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 professional experts involved. I thought that was such a great sliver of this film. Of course, you have the emotion of the family members. It begins with that, and we see that throughout the film, and even hearing from some of those individuals who are bullied themselves for varying reasons. One of the experts I have made notes with is because that's just the nerd that I am, uh, Thomas, is I was watching the film, and one of them talked about something that was very interesting, and I'd never thought of it, again, as someone who... Even though you know, I would you know, I joke about today, you know, uh, gr- you know, growing up and being in school with four eyes and all, being in band, and, you know, all of that. There, I never experienced bullying as far as to what I think most people think about when it comes to bullying. But one of the experts talked about the reason some people bully is to gain social capital. I thought that was so such an interesting thing, but it makes so much sense. Did you find that having those those professionals involved really kind of added a layer of understanding, not only to the one being bullied, but also the ones who do the bullying. Absolutely. Uh, being a scholar, a research scholar myself, it's sort of the orientation I take into filmmaking. With each film that I take up, I'm always interested in contacting uh, experts in the field and hopefully bringing them into the film. Uh, their expertise, I think, is crucial to us understanding these things. Too many times I've seen films, documentary films, on either bullying or, or some other issue in social justice and they really don't bring the experts to bear and so we have there's a great you know kind of void there in our understanding uh social capital is one of the reasons why kids bully as you were saying it makes them more popular it makes them cool it wouldn't be surprising if if members of your audience have seen videos on youtube or somewhere where a kid is being bullied and all the kids around, instead of breaking it up or coming to you know, assistance, will break out their cell phones and begin to videotape it, right? Yeah. And they'll put it up on social media. So it, it gains a crowd, and you know, it, it actually uh, causes the individual to be more popular and more successful. A lot of these kids that bully, it should be understood, however, a lot of these kids are themselves uh, – you know, damaged, they have issues as well. Yeah. Many of them are bullied in other contexts. So a kid who's bullying someone at school could himself be bullied at home. And that's a yeah. very common scenario I learned. Yeah. Yeah, so many, I mean, again, there's so much in here. I, I, I The emotion that's in here, though, and I think I think about it myself with my own suicide attempt and you know, we don't think about at the time those who were left behind. We don't think about the impact uh, that that has on others. You sh- you have that front and center in this. So I want to talk about what that was like for you, because even though for some there had been some time that it passed between the loss of their loved ones, you could tell that emotion was so raw and so fresh. What was that like for you to be able to capture that but also to experience it? Yeah, that, <clears throat> I will be very frank about it. It was very difficult. Um, I'm about to complete my fifth film, but I have never been involved with a film uh, before that was this uh, emotionally uh, difficult. This was a very emotionally difficult film to make, meeting these parents and and knowing that the loss they had endured and, and the interviews themselves, which were riveting, but heartbreaking. And so... Um, Gosh, there was no point in making this film where it wasn't just a a constant struggle to um, stay focused and, and, and not be overcome with emotions so that I could get the work done. Having to edit the film, which I edit my own film, so I'm spending hundreds of hours with this footage over and over again, and it really was an exhausting process. But at the same time, I feel those individuals in my film who've lost a child in most cases, I see them as extended family now. We formed a very close bond with one another. I mean, they ensured very delicate memories with me to tell their stories, to let them have a voice. And, and so that is what I did. I'm very protective of those people now. And uh, it was life-changing. 
Yeah, it, it, it's powerful. It's powerful to see. And we're going to talk more about uh, the pros and cons of social media. You referenced it there about these things being recorded. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, he's on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome Director Thomas Keith to our program today. We're talking to Tom not only about his uh, own passion for sharing stories, but also his new project that's out for you all to be able to see called Bullied. We'll let you know how you can be able to view it for yourselves and share your thoughts. So, Tom, I, I think, too, when I was watching this, uh, the other thing that came to mind is how much actual footage was there and whether we're talking about of you know hearing from some of the, the victims but also seeing some of the attacks. Uh, social media, especially in the, in the pandemic, I think has been a double-edged sword in, in a sense. It's mm. kept us connected for sure, but definitely has helped to escalate, as we have seen, you know, unfortunately even this year, escalate things that, you know, have gotten out of hand. What was that like for you to see? Because I do feel as though, again, in watching this, I thought, you know, there's so many different, I mean, there are almost classes that can be taught on so many different parts of this <laughs> of this film. What about the role of social media and the role that it played, not only in those who were bullied, but also in in, in spreading that, that hate and, and that violence? Yeah, I think you really nailed it there, that it's a double-edged sword. Uh, Social media, especially times like this when we're all sort of hunkered down during the COVID pandemic, social media can be a wonderful way to keep in contact with people and keep us sort of socially awake, as it were. And and so that's that's terrific. But unfortunately, there is a dark side to social media, as everybody knows, and bullying is one of those things. Probably the most common way kids bully and are bullied today is cyberbullying. Uh, it's much easier. Kids themselves will admit this, that it's much easier for them to bully online than it is face-to-face, which makes sense. There they are bet- uh, behind the relative anonymity of their computer screen, and they can post pictures, and they can say you know, sometimes horrible things and very destructive things without having to confront somebody face-to-face. Um, Another problem for it, of course, is unlike the bullying of the past, like when I was their age, cyberbullying really didn't exist. And so um, when I would go home, let's say I had been bullied or something like that, well, now I'm home. I'm away from it. I can actually pause now and breathe deep and and not, you know, feel that anxiety. But for kids in cyberbullying, there's no way to get away from it. Their, their comments are there 24-7, sometimes yeah. pictures going along with it that are being sent to all of their friends, the entire school, their members of their family, and this is devastating to kids. I mean, we are talking about their sort of lifeblood when you're a teenager or a preteen is what your friends think about you. And if you're suddenly humiliated in front of the entire school, um, you know, that can seem like there's just no escape. And I think that's where a lot of these kids... Uh, get into dangerous places is they just don't see a way to escape all of the humility, the the humiliation, and all of the social guilt and everything else that they're feeling. Such a great point. Uh, So you mentioned something about the difficulty of of a project like this. Did you find that the intent of the project evolved as the as the project itself evolved, or did you feel as though when you look at the final cut of Bully that we're able to see that this was the film that you wanted to make? You know, a little bit of both. Whenever I've made a film, there's always a sort of natural evolution that takes place. You know, you kind of storyboard things. You kind of have an idea, this is where I'm going. But in the course of interviewing different people, uh, they can raise points that you think, wow, you know, that's that's a terrific point that I hadn't thought about bringing in. So that's sort of how the evolution process occurs. Um, and so with this particular film, I did have the idea that however this film was going to turn out, it was important to me that it ended with a positive message, that there was a message of, of hope and there was yeah. a message of help so that people weren't just looking at something that could be, you know, emotionally devastating, and then it ends all of a sudden, and they feel like, you know, well, what am I supposed to do? Where do I turn? Yeah. And so I knew from day one of production that that was the film I needed to make, was something that gave people hope and, and lent assistance to them. 
So let's talk about then the way you've been able to use social media then. I noticed I'm now following the Facebook page for Bullied, of course, there one of the big announcements there is, of course, it being available for people to be able to watch, uh, even uh, for free in some respects on Tubi. I mean, so talk to us about how you've been able to use it to amplify the message, Tom, about Bullied. You know, social media, as we were saying earlier, is a, can be wonderful. It can be dreadful, but it can be wonderful. And getting this message out about a subject that millions of people have experienced. What, you know, here's another thing about making this film. I can't tell you how many testimonials I've now heard from people who, who even later in life, this could have happened to them 20, 30 years ago, and it's still vivid, very vivid to them. And so they will retell their stories. And sometimes social media gives them that ability where they can tell stories in a place where they feel safe among people who've had similar experiences. And even the Facebook page, I've noticed just story after story of people from all around the nation who have experiences that they want to talk about, you know, and they may not have talked about before, or if they did, it was many years ago. And so suddenly they have this outlet and a community of people that are supportive. I mean, I do have to watch that page. You know, I I don't always get supportive messages, and there can be messages that are, quite frankly, are cruel. And I delete Mm. those immediately. I won't allow those Mm. kinds of messages on the page to hurt others or to hurt, because all the people in this film, they're members of that page, and they see those comments, and they can be very upsetting. So I unfortunately have to monitor it, is there are people in this world who feel like, you know, they they want to be cruel about it. They want to, you know, tell people off and and actually, I guess you could say cyber bully. That's sort of what they're doing. And I simply won't allow that on the page. Tom, you're saying that surprises me. And I guess then I'm surprised that I am surprised. (laughs) But (laughs) I'm like, how can you go on a page about a film that's discussing bullying and then bully? I, I, I don't, I don't understand that, but again, it goes to what we've been talking about, about how social media gives people comfort, I think, and protection to be able to say and do things they wouldn't probably otherwise do. So what is the hope at this point? The film is now available. People can watch it. Um, What do you hope the conversations continue to be like, Tom? What do you want Bully to be able to continue to do in 2021? So the first half of the film, and I've had many people tell me this, can be difficult to get through. It's, it's emotional, you know, it's taxing. And the second half of the film is much more hopeful and it starts giving us uh, actual uh, programs and, and research from these experts that tell us how we can turn a lot of this around. So my ultimate goal for this film and the wideness of the audience is to get those positive messages out there to start instituting programs like social and emotional learning into the schools here in America in a much higher rates. Uh, These programs began in Europe, specifically Finland, and then grew throughout Europe. They moved on to Canada. And now some school districts here in America have started to adopt social emotional learning, not just to, um, you know, mitigate bullying and the effects of bullying, which it does. I mean, we have longitudinal studies now that prove it. We're not guessing about this. But beyond that, guess what happens when kids feel safer to go to school because they're being protected? Well, it should be obvious, but it isn't to some. Grades go up, GPAs go up, graduation rates go up. Everybody wins when schools are safer. What we know doesn't work is the zero tolerance policies of just kicking kids out of school. It doesn't lower the rates of bullying. And in fact, what it does for a lot of kids is get them into a criminal justice system what is sometimes called the the school-to-prison pipeline. So if we can start convincing more uh, American school districts to start integrating these programs into their already existing curricula, everybody wins. Bullying goes down. The Cleveland Unified School District witnessed a drop of 36% of bullying episodes since they instituted this in 2008. And their graduation rates are up and and their grades are up. So we know this works. I think there's just sort of the, the, the typical process of convincing people, whether they're educators, whether they work for the school board, whether they're principals, that this stuff works and it will help you reach your goals academically as well as socially and emotionally. You know, if we, if we start taking confidence in, this, in these programs 
I think you could see a national uh, difference, a shift occurring in bullying, in education, and that helps them long term. Now we're looking at more kids not just entering college, but being successful in college. The implications are, are wide reaching. The evidence is empirical. Every single expert in the country agrees with what I'm saying right now. And so it's not controversial, but it needs to be heard and it needs to be instituted. You know, the educational aspect, the school aspect, is something that I have to admit, Tom, I was a little conflicted about watching Bullied. Uh, you know, there was one parent who felt as though the school failed her daughter. And yes. I think the schools are in, it would seem on the outside, and you have more of a of a view on this, and I'm curious to hear, are sometimes in an impossible situation. If they do too mm-hmm. much, they're, they're, they're said to be heavy-handed. If they don't do enough then they're blamed. What about that? I mean, what what about that balancing act of, I mean, I, I understood, of course, the pain of the mother saying, you know, you have my child these eight hours, yes. but that we have seen the pendulum swing both ways. What about those conversations about what should or should not be done by schools and educators and those who are, are in the school system? It's a great, it's, it's a great question. It's a complicated answer. I'm very pro-teachers to begin with. I am a teacher. And I think teachers, the vast majority of teachers, are doing the very best they can. No, they don't want to see any of their students bullied or becoming bullies or anything like that. Uh, It is a difficult position that they're in. Many parents around this country are concerned about bringing, quote, values into the classroom. There are many parent groups that will you know, push back against the idea of bringing uh, value education into a classroom when they think that's something that should be at home. And that puts a lot of teachers in an untenable, you know, situation where they want to do more, they may want to say more, but there could be some boundaries around the things they're able to do that's coming from the principal's office or the district office that are saying, okay, here's what we can do, here's what we can't do, because we don't want to cross that line and, and turn this into some kind of a political agenda or you know, something that's going to rain uh, you know, potential lawsuits down upon us. And so I think a lot of the educators themselves are in a very difficult position. I know educators, and they love their students very dearly. They want the best for them. And so, but I I also understand a parent's grief, like you were talking about the one woman in the film. I mean, this is raw, you know, unmitigated grief, and anybody could understand where she's coming from, right? And I think it's natural to say, what happened? Someone let me down. My child was supposed to be protected, and and, and she wasn't, and and that's horrible. So I, I understand. I really have nothing but empathy for people that feel that way. Um, but I think one of the things that are going to have to be done is lawsuits be damned. Uh, you're going to have to bring value education, because that's what social-emotional learning is, into the classroom and make that case in court, if you have to, that this helps uh, students, it helps grades, it helps lower bullying, you know, and it, it should be a win-win for everybody. I hope, I truly hope that no one watches my film and thinks that this is a political film. It is not a political yeah. film. Yeah. We need all hands on deck. We need everybody, you know, on deck. I bring in a little bit of politics, and we don't need to talk about that, but I do so because leaders can be role models for bullying. I'll give you an example without bringing politics in at all. I played NCAA Division I sports when I was young, and some of the biggest bullies I ever knew in my life were my coaches. The way they would speak to us sometimes, you know, with sexist and homophobic slurs to try to motivate us, you know, was part and parcel of growing up when I was that age, and then that would validate it for, you know, young people like us. We'd start emulating them. So what I'm trying to say in parts of this film is those who have influence, those who have the privilege of leadership, need to model certain behaviors free of bullying, right, free of that kind of behavior, because young people are watching this, and they start thinking, well, that's how you act, you know, that's, that's how you get things done, that's how you gain respect. And, and so as long as adults are going to continue to model bullying behaviors, why should we think that kids are going to suddenly wise up and, and stop? 
I think it begins with us as adults, and particularly those of us who enjoy positions of leadership and influence, to model the right kinds of behavior for young people. Yeah. I totally agree. Again, everyone, uh, powerful conversation about a powerful film. Uh, Director Thomas Keith has been our guest. Great conversation with you, uh, Tom. For those who have not seen Bully, definitely invite you all to do it. It's on many of the platforms that all of us enjoy, including, as I said, even if you don't have those platforms, you can watch it on Tubi as well. But, uh, Tom, if you don't mind, let our audience know, how can they stay connected with updates on the film and, and stay connected with you? You know, right now the film's gotten enough visibility that literally if they just Google the word bullied, which is the title of the film, along with my name, all kinds of stuff comes up. They're more than welcome to join the Facebook page, also bullied. They can also just go to my website. It's TomKeith.com, TomKeith.com. And the very first thing you'll see is the the film Bullied and all the different ways that you can access it, that you can watch it uh, on, on different digital platforms largely for free. So it, it's very easy to connect with me, and I would invite them if they want to write, ask questions, carry on a conversation, please do. Love to hear from you. All right, Tom, congratulations again. Thank you so much for the time, and looking forward to having you back on the program again. Thank you. Wonderful talking with you, Cyrus. Oh, same here. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now let's go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>